Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, house of joy. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome you on whatever platform you're coming to us in on, and also those that are in the sanctuary. Welcome. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. We usually start off with the call to worship to talk about the attributes of God. Hallelujah. And he is good now. Hallelujah. The scripture says that he changes not. Hallelujah. The word tells us that in him there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Whereas we might, the, we might have a shadow that follows us around and moves wherever we move. But God doesn't even have a shadow that moves. He doesn't turn. There's no shadow of turning in him. Not even his shadow moves. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. And then the word tells us that he created us in his image and is in his likeness. Hallelujah. Can you believe that? Hallelujah. I hear the scriptures say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of God that thou considereth him. Hallelujah. For he has made us a little lower than the angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that when God created the earth and he created man, he gave us dominion? Hallelujah. He told us in Genesis, right in the beginning, in Genesis 1, he told us to subdue the earth and take dominion over it. Hallelujah. To subdue the earth, and what do you think that means? The dictionary says that subdue means to conquer and bring into subjection. So he gave us power, hallelujah, to, to bring the earth into subjection. All these things that we see happening in the earth, hallelujah, he gave us power and authority to get a hold of it, hallelujah, to bring it into subjection, hallelujah. And then he told us that he gave us dominion, hallelujah. God gave us, the people of God, dominion, hallelujah. Dominion, what is that? It implies power authority, jurisdiction, control, and command. So God not only gave us, he, gave, he told us to subdue the earth, and he gave us dominion over the earth. Hallelujah. So, and then he said, I have, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Can you believe that? So we have power over the enemy. Hallelujah. I just wanted to encourage you all this morning who you are. Hallelujah. When you look in the mirror, matter of fact, when you get up out of your bed, demons tremble. Hallelujah. Because of the word. Because they know that the word that there's angels, hallelujah, that go forth and the scripture says that angels, that they excel in strength and they hearken to the voice of God. So what does that mean? They hearken, they listen to the voice of God, to the word of God. So when you begin to speak the word of God and you take dominion and authority that's given to you, the angels go forth and perform those things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to um, remind you when you get out of bed and you look in the mirror at yourself that you know that God has given you favor, that he's given you dominion, he's given you authority, he's given you power. Know who you are. Hallelujah. Know who he made. Know that you were made in his image and his likeness. Hallelujah. Know, hallelujah, that he said that you are able to do, ex that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we ask or think according to his power that's at work in you. 
Hallelujah. All right, they didn't ask me to come up here and preach, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to Brother Stefan, and he's going to bring forth the word this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Shabbat shalom. And guess what, y'all? I'm learning. Because God gave me a scripture this morning, because I knew I was going to be called this morning. Something told me I was going to be called. So I came prepared, and uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I hope everybody's doing well online and, again, in the sanctuary uh, at the service. And the word that I have, uh, unless there's a word that I was supposed to read, did I read that? Okay, I'm good. All right, so I wanted to go to John. Uh, we're going to go to John, and we're going to read two verses in John. In John. I'm going to begin with John 1. John 1, I'm sorry, yeah, John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1, and then we're going to go to John are we all there? John 1 and 1 reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're going to drop down to John 1 and 14. I'm going somewhere with this real quick. I'll be brief. John 1 and 14 reads, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so when we look at this on the, um, on the first level, I guess, we can look at that and say that it's all about Christ. Because it is all about Christ. But what we also need to understand is if we proclaim that it's all about Christ, let me back up. Christ knew that it was all about him, and so did the Father. But because it was all about Christ, the way for him to please God and the love of God was for him to sacrifice for others. So Christ came down. He Remember, he was already up in heaven. He already had his position seated at the right hand of God. He was already good. But bec for the love of others, he came down here to dwell among us and sacrifice himself for us. So that being said, if we claim to be lovers of God and, and, the, lo and the love of Christ is in our hearts and minds and as we uh, exude that love, we've got to make it about others. It's not about me. The moment I say it's about Christ, I make it about me. And it should be the same for you. The moment we proclaim that it's about Christ, we should be making it about others. So just remember others. Remember your commitment to God. It's not about how you feel. Those that didn't make it in because you didn't feel like it. It has nothing to do with your feelings. It's about a commitment to God and our commitment to others. And so I commit myself to God and to Christ and to you all, and we make ourselves available daily for what God would have us to do for our brethren. And that's all I have. Amen. I will turn it over to Pastor Kevin. We'll pray. Praise the Lord. Boy, there's no other place that I'd rather be than the house of God today. How many of you are so grateful and so thankful to be in the house of God today? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us do what? Go into the house of the God. The Bible says they enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with what? And to do what? And to bless his holy name. Amen. Put your hands together and give your God some praise. So, 
before I, before we pray, I want to give honor to the legacy of this church, Ruben Beecham, the late Apostle Ralph Beecham, uh, Eric Beecham in his absence, Angelica Beecham, and to our elect lady, and to the Beecham family, and to all the saints, the elders, the pillars of this church, we meet you and we greet you here at the House of Joy Miracle Deliverance Church. In the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ, on the Sabbath day, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you for waking us up in our right mind, giving us the activity of our limbs. We thank you that our, all of our systems and our bodies are functioning properly in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, as we watch the news and as we listen to the radio and as we look on social media, the judgments of God are already being set. The seven seals are being opened, Lord God. The trumpets are being sounded, and the bowls and the wrath of God are being poured out into the earth. And during this time, Lord God, we ask that you begin to gather in your souls, Lord Jesus. Begin to go out and command us to go into the highways and to the hedges to compel those to come in. We are so grateful, Lord God, that you called us to be those that are here in these last and evil days, to be those witnesses in the end times, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for giving us strength in the name of Jesus. We thank you for saving our unsaved loved ones, Lord God. Trouble them in their hearts. Trouble them in their minds, Lord God. Quicken them. Awaken them, Lord God. Bring them into their right minds, Lord God, saying, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you and we pray over this country in the name of Jesus. We pray for those in the judicial branch, the legislative branch, Lord God. We pray for those in all branches of government, Lord God, that you would save our leaders, Lord God. Save them, touch them in their hearts, Lord God. Help them to make the right decisions for this country. We pray over our state representatives, Lord God, that you would touch them and bless them, Lord God, and help them to make the right decisions for the state of Colorado. We pray over our city, Lord God, our city government, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you touch the mayor, touch his administration, Lord God, touch each and everything in this government, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you and praise you for what you're doing in this city, Lord God. We thank you and praise you for what you're doing in this country. We thank you and praise you for what you're doing in this state. We thank you and praise you for what you're doing in all the churches in this community, Lord God, because we believe and we understand it takes a citywide church to win a citywide war. And Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this place. We, Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We ask that you would help us to decrease, that you may increase. Send a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Do something new, Lord God, in this place. Do something more. Give us power. Give us strength. Let us see the miracles in this place that you promised that will be poured out in the last days. And Father, help us to be encouraged and strengthened and to walk in close relationship with you, Lord God, through, the, through Bible study, through the study of prayer, Lord God, hallelujah, and through our own personal dedication in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God. We pray for those that are in prison. We pray for those that are sick and shut in. We pray for the widows and the orphans, Lord God. We pray for those, Lord Jesus, who don't have much, Lord God, that you would touch them, Lord God, that you would bless them, that you would strengthen them and encourage them once again, Lord God. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Have your way, and we'll be so careful and so mindful to give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Put your hands together, church, and tell God, thank you, thank you, and amen and amen. Amen. We're getting ready to have church today. We're going to turn this portion of the service over into the psalmist and the house of joy praise team. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am so glad that you made it here today. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if it wasn't for you, what would I do? Put your hands together and give your God some glory and some praise. Amen. Nothing like the Sabbath day, is it? The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. When you think about all those things that were before the law, the Sabbath day was one of those things. Marriage was before the law. The Sabbath day was before the law. 
tithing and giving was before the law, 400 years before the law. So all the law did was just give us civil instructions how to regulate the Sabbath and how to regulate the tithe. So there are so many things that go along with this day. And so we're just so grateful to see everybody's faces as we turn this portion over the service and to our, our psalmist. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. How's everybody doing this morning, this afternoon? Shabbat shalom. I give honor to God today. He is my Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to be before his presence. Amen. I, I, I don't even know what I'm going to sing, but we want to sing a little something here to kind of usher the spirit into this place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh-oh, Kev, Kev was on to something. But that sounds like a good one, though. Yeah. We, we can sing that. I like that one. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen? It's good to see some familiar faces in here. I ain't seen you in a in minute or maybe a couple weeks. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good to see everyone in health, everyone shining. Everyone, where, where's all the, the joyous people at in here? Who has joy today? So that's everybody, huh? Like I say, every week, we, God wakes us up. He starts us on our way. He protects us overnight. You know, have you ever been, like, snoring real bad, and then you wake up the next day, and it's like, oh, it's like somebody strangled you? Yeah, but all that stuff that goes on while we're sleeping, you know, we don't even know about, but God looks after us, and we, we, we're so grateful to that, amen? Let's sing some, let's sing a song here. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in him, and be glad in him. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. That the Lord has made. Come on, sing it again. This is, come on, the day that the Lord I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, this is the day. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. One more time, one more time. Hey, this is the day. Don't let Michi out sing you. Come on. I hear Michi all the way up here. That the Lord has made. Sing, Michi. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the Lord 
Lord has made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank him right now. We thank him for just being able to be here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm knocking stuff over here. <laughs> it's a lot of putting stuff back together from the concert that we've been doing. So we just thank and praise God right now. We thank God for protecting my mother as she, how was the, the funeral? <laughs> you sat up and said, it was a good celebration. <laughs> it went well. I'm glad to see Sister Bridget went with you. And yeah, you could have just stayed home today and relaxed and did, did your thing. She, she does so much work during the week. But just real quick, I just want to kind of conversate with you and ask you, have you guys noticed and Brother Kev touched on it a little bit earlier, how things are different now. Things are just a little tad bit different with people and just our surroundings and how people are acting. And It's just a difference. You know, when I pray, I ask God to show me things. Show me things what, you know, to come. Show me things that about myself that I need to work on. Just show me certain things, but this day and age, <laughs> it's kind of crazy now. It's a lot of things are just changing around us. There's a lot of distractions going on in the news. You know, you hear about all the, er the earthquake in New York, and, you know, they just kind of slip things by us. It's kind of just skimmed by us, but there's a lot going on around us that we're just not focusing in on. And we just need to keep our eyes open. Ask God to open up our spiritual eyes even more so because the tricks of the enemy are out there. Amen? Oh, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm stepping off. I'm stepping off. <laughs> don't don't want to do that, Brother Calvin, but yeah, just just a reminder, just just be vigilant. Be vigilant. Since the the fast, I was telling a friend of mine the other day that, <laughs> and this is kind of a shame to admit, but I really haven't gone major grocery shopping in a, in a while. You know, it's been months. You know, I I might pick up stuff here and there. But major grocery shopping I haven't done in quite some time. So just things from my house are changing big time. Um, I thank God for that. There's a lot of, um, you know, the, the food, everything is going up. Our prices, whether it be gasoline, whether it be anything, uh, the little things to the big things, it's all going up, houses even. You know, so we have to, to really prepare ourselves and be smarter. Have him show us that we have to be open to that. Amen? Just a little quick thing. Amen? Give God some praise. Amen? As we move forward in our service today, um, I believe we're going to lift up offering right now, and then we will have the speaker come up we'll get the um we'll have the ushers if we can get ev give out the envelopes to all the ones who need it and get prepare yourselves for offering we're going to have uh, we're going to turn the service over to brother glenda for the offering as she comes forth, I can come to you. Amen. 
Amen. We just thank and praise God for being here this morning. Amen. I say we're singing, this is the day that the Lord has made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And it's good to see everyone's faces this morning, those that are in person, even those that are online. We just thank and praise God for you. Um, just a quick thing, a couple quick things. Um, we know our church anniversary is just a couple of weeks away, um, and our pledge amount is $159 this year. So we're asking all those that um, can to give that $159. Amen. And it's just for the upkeep of this temple. Amen. Also, we're working on trying to get our air conditioning unit repaired. So anyone that wants to contribute to that as well, um, just put it in a pink envelope. Um, just raise your hand if you need one, a, a pink envelope, and we can designate it to either one of those missions. Yes. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand. Amen. We do want to hear what uh, Brother Calvin has to say on this morning. Just ask everyone to stand if you're able to. Amen. And just lift your offerings towards heaven on this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise you, Lord God, for the offering that we're about to receive. Lord God, we thank and praise you again for the hearts and the minds of your people. Lord God, we just thank and praise you, Lord God, for the miracles that you continue to perform for each and every one of us, Lord God. Whether they're big or small, Lord God, we thank you for the things that you continue to do for your people, Lord God. We ask that you bless the seed that they're giving, Lord God. Multiply it, Lord God, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And we continue to give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And they will come around and collect the offering from you. Amen. And while we're they're going around, anyone have a testimony that they want to give right quick? Amen. Brother Claudia is going to give a testimony while we're collecting the offering. Lord, everybody. So, um, our brother Ralph just got done talking about how things have changed. And so, I just want to say that um, in January, actually, I just turned 73. And I know, I know, thank the Lord. God has been good. Hallelujah. He said he will beautify the meek with salvation, didn't he? <laughs> and so I thank him because he also told me when I gave my life that he would restore to me the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm had eaten because he had a, a, a work for me to do. And so I thank God that he's given me my strength that I'd be able to uh, complete the assignment that he's given me. But what I wanted to say is that um, during my birthday, I was looking over um, some things. And I realized that um, when I started out, there was records, 33, 78 records. And now we got Apple Music. We don't even need records. I tried to use a CD, and, you know, the kids laugh at me. They don't do that anymore. It's just, they just get the music on the internet. We got car play and all that. We used to have black and white TVs, nine inch TVs. And now you got a hundred plus inch screen TVs. Hallelujah. I was um, alive during the civil rights movement where there was segregation and all that. And I've lived to see a black president. Hallelujah. Um, we, when we were coming up, we said that they would never legalize marijuana. And we've seen that. Colorado's a big one, one of the first to do that. And then we said there's no way that there would e ever be legalized same-sex marriage. And then we've seen that come to pass. We didn't think that there would ever be prayer out of the schools. And we've seen that happen. We didn't even have seat belts in cars. Now they're mandatory. We used to have big computer rooms and key punch machines in cars. 
Now you've got computers smaller than this. We used to have, uh, the cell phones used to be huge, about this big. Now cell phones are so small you can't even hardly read the writing for those that were around back then. We used to have ringer wash machines. Now there's a combination washer and dryer. You push one button and it washes the clothes and another one, it dries. And all I wanted to say is that all the things that I have seen, one thing I have not seen, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Hallelujah. I said earlier that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I stand on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I wanted to say this morning. God bless you. Amen. That was a testimony. Amen. Within itself. And as we just stretch our hands towards that, uh, the basket, Lord God, we just thank again. Thank you again, Lord God, for this offering that we received, Lord God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And we continue to give your name praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we'll turn it over into our elect lady, Pastor Kendra. Okay, I'm going to give the mic away to somebody. <laughs> this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to stay in my lane. Be glad in it. Amen. And amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. Give an honor to God and to the saints and to all those that are here today. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he been sent? Many are called, but few are. Oh, how beautiful are the feet of those that and bring good tidings. Amen and amen. I want you to point your hands in that direction right there. And I want you to say, God bless. God bless. Brother, elder, deacon, evangelist, Calvin Estes. Let us receive him as he comes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. I don't take it lightly. And God has blessed my life in a tremendous way. Uh, and I'm thanking. Um, first thing I want to do is enter in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord God. I thank you for all the things that you're doing in my life, Father God. I ask that you put the flesh man down, Father God, and raise up the spirit man that you've given, the Holy Ghost, Father God, that you've given to me, Father God, when I accepted your, Jesus as my Lord and Savior, Father God. I ask that you move me back. And let your spirit shine forth that I may speak exactly what you want me to speak. 
And that the ears of your people be open and receptive to your word. I thank you and I praise you for the holy blood that was shed on Calvary Cross, Lord God, and all the things that you're doing in my life. I praise you. I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, it's just, this is just a, it's, it's amazing how <laughs> everybody that's spoke today it actually touched on some of the things that God was putting in this message for today. I went all week trying to figure out what God want me to say. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't until the last minute last night that he started touching my heart in certain areas. Uh, I just want to add to something that uh, uh, the, my sister said today when she was talking about uh, dominion was given to man. But there is, uh, you, you, we, I hope you know that God has got an order. In order for us to have power over anything, we have to first be subjected in subjection to the things of God. We have to first be obedient to what he says in his word. We can't take power over nothing without Jesus. So the first, because God is a God of order. And everything in this universe <laughs> has to submit to God first. Man has a choice. Choose the right thing. Be obedient to the things of God. And the only way we can know that is by reading his word and studying his word. We're coming on, we're coming up in times now where now the brother was talking today about things have changed. And the sister was talking about things that changed. Yes, we're living in a day of time where there's a lot of things going on. I want, if you can, turn to Matthew chapter 24, and I want to read some things that uh, our Lord and Savior said about the day and time that we're living in right now. Uh, chapter 24, verse 3 says, And as he sat on Mount Olives, and the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall be these things? When shall the signs that are of his coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of rumors of wars. See that ye not be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, that the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these things are signs. God tells us to look for the signs. So a lot of things that's going on, like the eighth of this month coming up, the eclipse is coming. Don't you know God is a God of order? That's a warning sign to the children of God that he's coming and he'll be here soon. It's a warning sign. God just don't happen to do nothing. Ain't nothing done in, 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 in this universe or in this world is by accident. God purposes everything that goes on in this world. And he gives us these signs for us to see and to be prepared for what is to come. And then you shall be delivered and afflicted and shall... And, and, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations. Y'all know they hate Christians. We are talked about really bad now. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There's so many things going on right now, you guys. We got to, as a, as a child of God, we got to stay alert. And I'm not talking about running around trying to critique this brother and critique that brother. We got to look at ourselves. You got to look at that man in the mirror. What are you doing? 
What are you doing? Are you being obedient to the things of God? Are you being obedient to the word of God? Are you standing in his word trying to see what's going on? What do I do, Lord? What must I do? The perfect example that I could give is by being obedient to the word of God. That's the perfect preaching I could do, is by being obedient to the word of God. Not for no show. Not to look good before man. But to be pleasing in the eyes of my father. That's the best example. I'm going to let the word speak for itself. Turn to Romans chapter 1. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from heaven. Huh. Oh, Lord, help me right here. <laughs> ah. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for, the, for God has showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the cre- creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that were made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because when they, they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Then it's in this critical time. It is very important that we, that we glorify God and be, and be truthful and not ho- hold this thing and not glorify him. It says neither, neither were they thankful. Are you thankful today? Are you thankful for the position that you have in your life? Are you thankful that you that you are able to even come into the church or hear the voice of the Lord. Are you thankful for that? That you know the difference between what's right and wrong, whether or not you're doing it or not. Are you thankful that God is trying to pull you in? He wants you to hear. He's put signs in the, in the, in the world for us to, for us to observe, 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 observe and see and know that the time is near. Because he said, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Hey, let me tell you something. Don't play with this thing here. You're not better than nobody. Especially not the God of creation. And they changed the glory into an uncorrupted, into uncorruptible God. Unto an image made like unto corruptible man, birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies. He said, ooh, here we go, here we go, here we go right now. Because we were disobedient and wasn't thankful. You can see where God has taken his hand off man. He said, and change the truth of God into a lie. Worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them over to vile affections. Come on now. Here it go right here. You wonder why things are going on the way that they're going on now. That wasn't going on before. My brother and sister touched on this same thing. So this is meant God wants them to hear what he's saying in his word. He said, for this cause God gave them up to vile affection. Even their women cha- did change the natural use unto w- that which is against nature. Likewise, the men leaving the natural use of the, of the woman, burning their lust one towards another. Men with men, doing those things which are unclean. Come on now. God didn't mean for all this stuff to be going on, but it's going on. We have forgotten and turned away from God and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. This flesh is dead. 
There's two manners of men. If you believe in Jesus Christ, when you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Lord says, the Bible says we are born again. There's two manners of men in you. That new man that was created in you must be nursed with the word of God. And in order for it to take power and subdue anything in this world, it has to be fed the word of God. And you have to be obedient to the things of God. We are God's creature, creation. We belong to him. We, we were created for his glory. After his likeness was we created. It is imperative that the child of God be a light to the rest of the world that is in darkness. You have a divine purpose, House of Joy, and everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you have a divine purpose because God will not allow you to be hearing this right now if it wasn't meant for you. My God is a God of order. Ain't nothing by accident with God. That eclipse that's coming is a sign. It's a wonder in the earth. God, and it's coming across America. It's making a crisscross. It's making a, it's completing the cross, okay? There's some things that's going to go on. It's time for us to woo, do what the word of God says. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. You got to turn. You have got to turn. You can't just say, oh, I'm not going to do that no more, God. I'm sorry. That's not repentance. Repentance is true. Repentance is turning away. Never turn into that thing again. I was thinking, I was asking God a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> I'm talking about the Lion of Judah, the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, that good shepherd, the bread of life, the word of God, the Messiah, light of the world, the rock of offense to all those who don't believe. Jesus what is going on in this world right now, Lord God? I was asking God, I said, I'm asking God some questions. He reminded me in his word. See, one thing about the word of God, if you, if you want to answer, if you really want to answer, search the scripture. God tells us, he, has, he tells us to study and stir ourselves a fool. But one thing I need not be a saying, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's imperative that source of all I just ran across it <laughs> today or not today but the last couple of days it's really trying to fix what what I was trying to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God speaks to man. Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man and instruct me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you can, if you have the understanding of the measures that were set there up. Who stressed the line on it? And can you make the morning stars and the children and the sons of God sing with joy. Can you enclose the sea with doors to make the sea have its place? Have you commanded the morning and caused the dawn to know its place that it, that it might take hold of the wicked and shake it out of? Or walk the recesses of the deep. Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Have you seen the, the gates of darkness? Declare unto me if you can. 
Where is the way and the dwelling place of light or darkness? Where is the place in his territory that you may discern the, its path home? Do you know? Oh, you know. You were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered into the storehouses of the snow and the storehouses of hell, which have been reserved for the time of distress, for the day of war and battle? Do you know the way of the thunderbolt to bring the rain? The land and to to the land in the desert, without a man in it. Can you satisfy the waste in the desolate land that it sprout of seeds of grass? Has the rain of Father, who has begot the drops and the dew? For whom, uh, from from whose womb cometh the ice and the frost of the heaven? Who has given it birth? Can you loose the cor- the cords of Aram and lead forth the constellations in its season? Can you do this? Do you know the ordinances of, of the heaven and the fixed rules of the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of water will fall from it? Can you send forth lightning? That they go forth and then say to you, where, is, where, where are we, Lord? Who has put wisdom in the uttermost parts and given understanding to the mind? Who can count the clouds by wisdom and satisfy, and satisfy the appetites of the lion? Who has prepared for the raven his nourishment? And then cry unto God and wander about without food. Do you know the time of the mountain goat that it gives birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Can you count the months they are fulfilled? Do you know the time that they give birth? Do you give the horse its might and clothe them with majesty? With a neck with man to make uh, to make him leap. He laughs at fear and is not dismayed. He goeth out to meet the weapons and does not turn his back on the sword. He does not stand still of the voice of the trumpet. He is ready to go forth to war. It is by the understanding that the hawk swore and stretches his wings towards the south. It is at his command that the eagles mount up and make his nest high on the cliffs and dwell in the recesses, in inaccessible places. From there he spies out his food. His eyes see it from afar off. <laughs> Can you clothe yourself with majesty and honor? And adore yourself with glory. Can you look unto everyone who is proud and humbling? And tread down the wicked where they stand? Can you look into the heart of man? And know him? Can you count the beats of his heart and number them? Can you count the number of his days and keep track of his weeks and months? Can you meet the need with the words of his mouth? Can you in all your glory <laughs> look into the minds of every man and declare his intent? Can you judge each one of them in holiness and righteousness with love and mercy? Or in all your glory and righteousness will heaven hand you over? We 
We serve a mighty God, a great God, a powerful God, who looks into the heart of every man. That's why it's so very important. Don't put on no show for nobody. Because my Father in heaven knows everything about you. He said, it comes a time now is when every Word, every idle word that a man speaketh, he will give account of it in the day of judgment. I love the Lord today, and I thank God for everything that he's doing in my life. I don't take any anything lightly. I'm looking to me. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at my life. I'm looking at my family. I'm asking that everybody under the sound of my voice to stay observant of what's going on. And Pastor is about this thing because it's real. There's so many things, man, where I, I don't even like to look at the news too much because it's depressing. There are things going on in the world, you guys, that was not going on 30, 40 years. Don't even really want to speak on it now because it's, it's just so much wickedness. Mothers is doing things that they never did to their children and fathers doing things they never, it's never did before. These are signs. The Bible says that the, the love of many will wax cold. People do not care about one another. They're worshiping and serving the creation more than the creator. They ain't thinking about God. Whether it's money or self, they, and, and it, oh, man, I just have to just really just turn away from Facebook. You got people on there, they want you to, to glamorize. They want you to worship them. And the foolishness that they're doing. You you all over in the internet, the more wicked you are, the more you own there. Thank you, Lord. I thank y'all for this word. I thank you. This is all I have for today. And I, I praise God for everything that he's doing in my life. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in the name of your holy son, Jesus, Father God, I ask Father God, that you will touch each and every heart, Father God, who has heard this word, Father God, and that you will give them a new anointing, Father God, and a desire to seek your face. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Brother Calvin. What a word. Can we all just stretch our hands toward his son in the gospel this morning as he has taken time to prepare the word of God and has just offered his heart, his mind, his body as a sacrifice unto you, Lord, so that you might bless this temple, God, and bless the word that will come out of his mouth, Lord. We thank you that even in this season of even learning more about living a godly, holy life before you, God, Obeying your word, honoring your word, we see there's so much in it. Lord, help us to take heed from our spirit and to take heed to your word that you're speaking to us today, Lord. You're not speaking in vain. Lord, we ask that you will continue to strengthen him, make new life. Continue, oh God, to show him the miraculous works that you're doing in his life, Father. And the power of prayer to the saints is a strength. He's been prophesied many times about the work that God has for him, that the work that's in front of him to do, Lord. I thank you, God, for helping him to press toward that mark, to the prize, God. We realize we got a prize we're working for, God, and that we 
it's the moment you have to pause and continue to do the work of continuing, oh God, to realize that our mission is not impossible, but it's possible. Thank you, God, for breaking us down and making way for her, God. Healing her body, God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. We thank you right now for the word that's been deposited this day in this house, Lord. And we just look forward, oh God, to what you will continue to do in his life. We take authority. There's no retaliation for his body, mind, his spirit that the enemy will try to bring upon us. We can clear up the congestion, oh God, that's in his head, Lord. We thank you right now, and we bless you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love and tender kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sean, for saying yes. Thank you, Shauna. I thank you, House of Joy, for all of you saying yes to God's will. There's been so many of you that have brought forth words, that have been faithful to prayer. You've been faithful to Bible studies, and I just want to thank you for that. We had the concert here this past 